An empty tract of land bought for $70,000 and sold just two years later for nearly eight times the purchase price. In our new investigation, we uncovered documents that show the sale benefited the family of a Jefferson Parish politician. It's worse than old school politics. Old school politicians would never sell out the community and children for something like this. A land deal connected to two current politicians. I'm in construction. I'm a general contractor. I know how land speculation and land development goes. It stinks. A deal that Jefferson Parish School Board member Derek Shepard says could only be pulled off with connections. And it's just a shame. In 2017, Jefferson Rise Charter School had interest in moving the school to this property in Marrero off Acres Road. The school wouldn't tell us by email why the deal fell through, but records show Rise planned to purchase the property for $100,000. About a year later, a business called the Acres Group bought that same property for $30,000 less, a $70,000 deal. Online records show the owner of the Acres Group, Diane Bourne, has no experience in real estate development. The Acres Group, her only business ever registered with the Secretary of State. Those records show her at a Baton Rouge address. According to LexisNexis, she's a 73-year-old woman who has an employment history and home health. Derek Shepard says she bought the property because of who she is, the sister of longtime Jefferson Parish politician Byron Lee. Months after purchasing the property, the Acres Group submitted an application to make the property a subdivision. A company called the Maxima Group paid the nearly $5,000 application fee. The Maxima Group's owner, Byron Lee. And this brings us to another Jefferson Parish politician, Mark Spears. For 20 years, the Jefferson Parish District 3 Council seat has been occupied by two men, Byron Lee and Mark Spears. Lee from 2004 to 2012, Spears from 2013 to 2019, and Lee from 2020 to today. School board member Derek Shepard says Lee is Spears' political mentor. He is the one when Byron first left office, he endorsed Mark Spears for the seat who had no previous experience brought him into the seat, ran his campaign, did everything for him. Remember, a company owned by Byron Lee's sister purchased that property and wanted to convert it into a subdivision. To start the process of becoming a subdivision, it received money for an application fee from Byron Lee. Around that same time period, Spears appointed a new member to the parish's planning and zoning board, the board that initially decides to approve things like zoning changes like this deal. The new board member, Dylan Borg, fresh on the board, he made the motion to allow this property to be a subdivision. At one meeting, members of the community spoke out about the project. Once again, I am standing for this and um, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for some of the people in, in the community. I know we definitely would like this to, uh, this to happen. We was concerned about the back part of Mansfield, where the drainage area is. We was informed that they had asbestos there. So only thing we're asking to show us, prove to us that we're going to be safe. The Planning and Zoning Board didn't take a vote, but at its next meeting without any public comment, approved the rezoning of the property, one step closer to becoming a subdivision. Would you like to open the public hearing? I wish not to open the public meeting. So this board will recommend to the Parish Council that WS 5419P be approved. Soon after that vote, Dylan Berg, the Spears appointee, left the planning advisory board, only on the board for about six months. Then the next and final step of approval involved the parish council. Mark Spears brought forward the motion for council approval. The council unanimously approved it. It just so happens that approval came at Spears' last meeting. He left the council to become justice of the peace. Then Byron Lee went back on the council. This was in Mark Spears' district. He made the motion to have it approved. He appointed one person on the public, uh, on the planning advisory board. The Acres Group bought that property for $70,000. After winning approval to build a subdivision there, the business didn't build any homes or develop it, but instead put the property back on the market. Around that time, Byron Lee's son also became an officer of the Acres Group. Months later, the Acres Group sold the property for $550,000, on paper a $480,000 profit. Byron Lee was even a witness to the sale. There is his signature on the cash sale paperwork.
So basically, it's a profit of almost half a million dollars. Half a million dollar profit for doing, they didn't do anything to the land. Nothing to the land. Byron Lee declined our request for an interview, but in a letter told us his only role in the project was loaning money to his sister for the application fee. And since he wasn't in elected office at the time, that decision should not be the subject of a news broadcast. He also added the profit does not include the cost of development. He didn't write how much those costs were or what work was done. Byron Lee says these unfounded claims are coming from a former political opponent, Derek Shepard, who lost the council race to Lee in 2019. You ran against Byron. Yes, yes. Is this political on your part? Well, no, it's personal because it's my community, it's my neighborhood. I live up the street from this. There's going to be over 200 more houses, 200 more cars coming up and down this neighborhood. There's going to be more traffic more congestion. I mean, if you look at it, we need development in this neighborhood, but it's just basic infrastructure. We need streets. We need drainage. Mark Spears also declined our request for an on-camera interview. He called Shepard unreliable and says he appointed Dylan Berg to the planning advisory board because he is a state building inspector and has experience and knowledge of property and buildings. Both Spears and Lee said most people in the neighborhood support the development. I think it's a good idea. Do you think most of the neighborhood is, is happy with the, the development across there? I'm more than sure they are. Have you yeah. spoken to a lot of people? I then? spoke to a lot of them. They had concerns about this and that. And, uh, flooding was one of their main concerns. I've never flooded since I've been back here. We found people in the neighborhood who support, but are also leery of the deal. I'm not really happy about it. Uh, I like the way it looks. It brings, it adds that flavor. But I'm worried about the flooding. I'm worried about, especially the plumbing area. Everything is politics, I think, now. With all of the politicians that we put in office, to me, they're more, they're more concerned about their well-being than ours. And we're the ones put them there, and it shouldn't be that way. Shepard says he cares because it's his neighborhood. I grew up down the street from there. I'm, I'm I still live in the house I grew up on, literally four blocks from there. Construction is underway for the neighborhood, which will eventually hold more than 100 homes. Shepard says he's worried about traffic, drainage, and other environmental issues the subdivision could cause or bring. And he says the chain of events that led to the subdivision's approval boils down to political favors that netted one family nearly half a million dollars. This is what I think that they are uh, destroying our community for personal gain. Period, point blank. If you buy something for 70000 you don't do anything but get a permit and you turn around and sell it for 550000 Just in itself, reeks, it stinks. Commercial real estate company Jack Stump & Associates was behind the sale of the property to the Acres Group. Byron Lee sent us a letter the company's founder wrote earlier this month. In it, Jack Stump said when plans for Jefferson Rise Charter School to build on the site fell through, quote, I had no other clients interested in the Acres Road site until I was approached by the Acres Group who purchased the property four months later for $70,000. He went on to say the owners just wanted to get rid of the property because people kept dumping trash on it and the parish would require that they be uh, they clean it up or be fined. We reached out to Dylan Borg by phone to ask him about his brief time on the Jefferson Planning and Advisory Committee and why Mark Spears appointed him. He told us he did not want to comment.